Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to a new video. I'm really happy to have you here. First, I'll kindly ask you to hit a like and hit the subscribe button. That helps me create more content. And today we are going to talk about creating fitable timelineable items. Um, so basically creating timelines like Twitter's or Facebook's where you have multiple types of resources. You have ads, you have posts, you have announcements all at the same place. So, um, first of all, I would like to show you um, a project called Ethereum. It's a project of mine. So, um, I use that there. I have a recent activity sidebar that uses the same concept. This is called either, it can be called, um, you have several ways to handle this. Um, there, is some, there is a pattern called um, delegated type pattern, which we can use here. Um, you can use something called multi-table inheritance. And uh, this is not limited to a language or a framework of any sort, but I'm going to use Laravel. You can do this on Rails. I actually have a blog post using Rails and the link is in the description. You can use Django, you can use JavaScript, whatever you want. The concept is the same and it applies to all of them. So um, let's jump into the code and I can show you guys what I am talking about. So here I have a few. And you can see that I have this recent activity tab and it has different resources. So here I created a project, here I created a report, a discussion, another discussion. So if I click here, it takes me to the discussion, it takes me to the video. So first of all, this is the database schema that we're going to use on our uh, example. We have posts and we have announcements. A post has a content, a user ID, which refers to a user, so it's a relationship. A timestamp, which is created at. Announcement has content, the same as post. An announcer, which is just a string, so this could be a few, for instance. And they're created at timestamp. Let's say we want to, let's say we have the following situation. We have a post, then we have an announcement, and then we have another post. We need to show this chronologically on the page. And sure, a good way to do this, not a good way, but what you can do is fetch all of the announcements, fetch all of the posts, merge them, and then we can order them by created at date. That works, but uh, it only works at first. Uh, if you want to apply query constraints or if you want to paginate it, you're going to find a lot of trouble. Let's say you want 20 items per tip per page. Um, how can you properly fetch uh, the correct amount of announcements and posts? Let's say page two only has one announcement. How can you fetch only one announcement in 19 posts? How can you write uh, good queries? How can you scale this? Let's say you want to add now, uh, you also want to add an ad, an advertisement. So how, how, how can you add this? It just doesn't work very well. Another option is just to have a mega table with all of this this data. So you would have a table that has content, user ID, announcer, and created at. And if you want to add a new resource that uses another field, you would add it there as well. So you end up with a mega table with lots of columns and it's how to maintain and it's not easy to carry the query then. Query it because it has lots of items. It's also not a good option. A really good option is to use the delegated type resource and multi-table inheritance to do this. So our issue here is to gather those chronologically. So that's the problem. A good solution is to use another table to do this. So we are going to create another table that kind of act acts as a bridge, as a proxy to handle this. For instance, let's say we're going to call it fit items. So you would have the fit items table. It would have the fitable ID and the fitable type and the created ad. So fitable ID is just the ID of the resource. So let's say it actually first looks at the type. So let's say it is a post and it has the ID of two. It's going to look for post ID two. If it's announcement ID 1, it's going to look for announcement ID 1. And this is really good because instead of running the query on announcements or posts, you are going to run it on the feed item. And after you get the feed item, you are going to look into the resource. So while you could do the previous approach, 
you would have to write a bunch of ifs in your code to check if it's an announcement or if it's a post, plus all the other issues I've mentioned. With this, you can fetch the feed items and yes, you can use some if blocks to check whether it's an announcement or it's a post, but you can also use the delegated type pattern to delegate that um, those checks to the proper resource. So let's say you have a feed item. So you have a feed item and you want to know its um, creator. So the person who, who, you know, the author of the feed item, let's say you want to do um, author name, something like that. It doesn't have the column, but you can delegate this to the resource it is um, that it handles. So when you call author name, if it's a post, it's going to check the name of the user. If it's an announcement, it's going to check the announcer. And you can do this through the code. So you're delegating this to another resource, to another model. So let's see how can we do this using Laravel. The concept it still applies to every language. This is just a polymorphic relationship. Django has it, Rails has it, Laravel has it, and you can do it easily on a vanilla language, whether you're running JavaScript or PHP or Node, um, I mean, <laughs> Node is JavaScript, or Rails or Elixir or anything, you can do this. So I already have some items on the database. Let me show it to you guys. I have some posts and I have an announcement. And you can see that this announcement falls between the first post and the second post. So the order would be post, announcement, post. Let's see how we can use this polymorphic relation to solve this. If I go into the post, you can see that I already have a relation here. If I go to the announcement, I don't have anything because the announcer name is just a string. And if I go to the feed item, I already have a relation as well. This is Laravel's way of handling morphable relation, polymorphic relationships. Um, this could vary per framework, but basically we are just saying that whenever we call this, this method, or we call the feedable property, Laravel is going to behind the scenes check the type of the feed item and fetch the proper resource. So if we have um, a feed item with the type announcement and ID1, it's going to look for announcement of ID1. If we have post ID2, it's going to look for post ID2. So basically what we are doing is we are going to fetch things through this model. Information is still going to be within the post or announcement model, but we are going to fetch it through this. So on our timeline, we are going to fetch this model. If the user wants to check uh, a post, we are going to fetch the post directly because we know that he wants to fetch it specifically or an announcement. But on the timeline, we are going to use this. Um, so let's go. Um, the first thing that I want to do is to create the feed item on the backend. So if we go here inside feed item all, you can see that there's no feed item. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to create and be back real soon. Okay, I'm back. I've already created the feed item. So if we run feed item all, you can see that we have the first one, which refers to a post, the second one, which refers to a, an announcement, and the third one, which refers to a post. Another thing is that on the schema, I forgot to add the feed items ID, but we are not going to use it right now. We're going to use the created at, but um, it's good to have an ID. So we already have this. We already have the inverse relationship. So when we are inside a post and we call it a feed item, it's going to look for a feed item of type post with the ID equals to the post. And the same thing for an announcement. It's going to look for an announcement with the ID of the announcement. Now, it gets real easy. So let's go to our roots page. Um, we already have a view called timeline with the feed items. Let's go to it. And it gets really easy. We can just do for each feed items as item. Um, let's always fetch those chronologically. 
So for each, let's say we want to say um, content something and then buy something, something like that. Let's do a n for each and we have to, okay, so we have it here. We can see that we have uh, three items but how do we add the content? So for the content, we can just do item uh, feedable content because all of them have has a, have a content. Um, for the user, for the person who posted it, it gets a little harder. We would have to do, hey, if this item is a post, we do this. If the item is an announcement, we do whatever. And this is where uh, the delegated type pattern is really handy. So what we can do is say item, um, let's say poster, something like that, creator, something like that. And let's change this and just say content. And it's not going to work because it does not have those properties. What we can do is delegate this to the feedable. So Laravel has its own way of creating uh, magic attributes. We could use a method as well. I'm actually going to use a method just to make things clear to everyone that does not use Laravel. So let's create a function content. And here we can do is we can proxy this, this call to the feedable. Right now, all of them have a content, so we can just proxy this and we don't have a function creator, Let, let's leave it empty for now just so I can show you guys and you can see that we have the content now for the creator, us, um, this field is different depending on the resource we can do something like this um, if the feedable is a, or even better, we can do something like this you can do feedable creator name, something like that. But hey, that property does not exist. Let's turn this into a method to make it easier for those of us who do not use Laravel. But hey, this method does not exist. And that's the deal. We are making a standard API here. So all of them are going to have this creator name. We can even uh, implement a contract. We can implement an interface, but let's not do it on this video. So we can go to both posts and to announcement and have this method. And what you can see here is that we are always calling this creator name method regardless of the type of feedable. We have a standard API and the object itself is going to be responsible to for telling us, hey, the creator name is this one or the creator name is this one. So it's still going to be empty. In the post case, the creator's name is the user's name. So we can say user name. And you can see that we have Mateus. On the announcements case, the creator's name is just the announcer. And what? Let me double check this. Announcement first. Things are not supposed to go sideways in the video. Oh, it's missing in that. And you can see that we have this and we have a very standard API. So if we were to call any feed item and we say announcer name, oops, it's not announcer name, it's creator name. Whoops, it's not creator, sorry. And call creator. What? What? What's going on? Why it's not working? I forgot to refresh it. Fit item first creator. And we call this. We always get something. So even if we call it randomly, we always get something. You can see it. Because this is a standard API. Um, we could even go further and say that both should implement feedable. Something like that where we would be able to enforce that it has all the methods needed by a feedable item, by an item that shows up on the timeline. So here you have it chronologically 
and you can just you know let's say you want to have the link for the resource you can also add a method called link that is going to delegate it to the feedable and then you can have an implementation for post and an implementation for announcement so basically in the end of things what we did is we are delegating responsibility to the feedable and the feed item only acts as a bridge to show items on the feed if we were to fetch a post specifically we're going to call post directly if we were to fetch an announcement specifically we are going to fetch announcement directly if we happen to add advertisements instead of changing anything we can just add those methods to the advertisement and create a feed item for it as well and that works perfectly and if you want to make layout changes for advertisements and posts and announcements you can also add some methods something like is post so you can just say this feedable type equals um, a post that would make you uh, check if it's a post so if you want to return a different layout or you want to have a different color depending on the type of feedable you can do it in the feed item object as well this way you can keep your code very clean you don't have to worry about the API um, you, you don't need to do any ifs you can just call creator and it's going to forward the call to the feedable if we make the feedable implement an interface, we can make sure that it ha has all the methods. And that's it, guys. Here you get uh, a really clean API. It gets really easy to scale because of the database schema that you have. You can order everything chronologically or you can paginate them just fine. And that's it, guys. Um, I would ask you to check the blog post. I'm not sure if I made a good, um, a good job showing this in video. Um, the blog post has things a little bit more detailed. It's in Ruby, but that shouldn't be an issue. This is applicable to any sort of framework or language. This is just how Laravel just thinks. And that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoy the content. And again, please hit subscribe and hit the like button if you liked it. And talk to you later. Bye-bye, guys. See you later.